Hi, I'm Roseanne Israel, speech language pathologist and owner of fun to talk and today I'm going to share with you how you can take a game, Build a Robot by Eboo Games, and turn it into a PowerPoint interactive game that you can play with a spinner or a dice for teletherapy. The physical components of the game include a spinner, four of these game boards, and a whole bunch of these puzzle pieces that fit in to make up a robot. To get started, you need to take some pictures or scan the game pieces and then save them somewhere safe on your computer for easy retrieval. So I'm going to start off by opening a new document and I'm going to pick the layout to be blank. The first thing I'm going to do is insert the pictures of the game board that I scanned onto my computer. That's this picture over here. Now when I scanned it on my flatbed scanner, it came up with the background as well and I want to get rid of that. So I'm going to click on crop. It comes up with these black lines and then I can drag the lines closer to the picture and crop out the parts that I don't want. And when I've got it looking the way I want, I click on crop again. And this game board was actually designed to be played at an angle like that. Now, the way I plan on using this game board is to have me and the child each having our own game board. So I want to be able to fit two on the screen. So I'm going to duplicate it. The shortcut for duplicating is Control D. Now, they don't quite fit onto the slide. So I'm going to make them a bit smaller. And then I'm going to save them as a single picture. Because the way it is right now, when the client starts pulling the pieces onto the game board, there's always the risk that they might move the game board around, and that's very frustrating when it messes up the game. I've also had it before where they suddenly, whoops, stretch the game board, and that also messes things up. We want to create one picture out of these two and then lock it in place as a background. So the way to do that is to highlight both pictures, right-click, and select Save as Picture, and then I'm going to save it as build a robot. Okay, so that picture is now saved, which means I no longer need these ones. So in order to insert that as a background so it won't move, we go to the design and then we go to format background. That pulls up this menu and we select the picture or texture fill. Then we go to picture source, insert from a file and I have to locate the build a robot picture that I just saved which is right over here and there it is. Now you'll notice that it's slightly cut off on the side which I don't really like so I can use this tile picture as texture tool and I click it a couple of times. The first time it does something a bit weird kind of makes it worse and the second time it stretches it into place for a perfect fit. So that's now our background, and now it doesn't matter how much I click on it, it's locked in place, which is going to be much better for us, for our game. And now I have to start building the game pieces. So I'm going to find the sheet of pictures that I scanned. Those are the game puzzle pieces. I'm going to find those on my, in my pictures. Double click. And now I have to go and crop each picture individually, and then remove the backgrounds from them so that I have the standalone graphics. So I'm going to have to repeat this for every picture on the sheet. So I'm going to duplicate it now. So I've got several to work from. I'm going to crop. And I'm going to drag this L-shaped bracket down to the bottom and drag this one up a bit. And click crop again. And now I have this puzzle piece shape, but it has the background. So I want to remove the background. To do that, I have to make sure that I am clicked on the picture. And then under the picture format tab, we do remove background. Now everything that is pink is going to be removed. So I'm going to mark some areas to keep. Clicking on mark areas to keep. And then I have to draw over the spots that I want to keep. This can sometimes be a bit fussy. And sometimes what I even find is parts that have previously been kept in 
sometimes jump back out again. But that looks about right. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so now I have that game piece ready. See, with the background removed. So now I'm ready to do another one. I click on the main sheet of pictures. I click crop. I'm going to drag that little corner shape to where I want it to go. Click crop again. And now I have to remove the background. So I click on remove background. And I'm going to mark the areas to keep. And there we have it. Okay, so now that shape is done. So I've done two shapes and I need to do all the others. So I'm going to continue working on this off camera and I will come back to you when I am done. And now I want to make some finishing touches to it. So I'm going to highlight all of them. And the shortcut for this is holding down the control button while you drag the mouse over everything. And that selects all the pieces at the same time. And now I'm going to just add some special effects to them. So under picture format, I am going to have some picture effects. First, I'm going to add a shadow, an inner shadow. So you can see there how it makes them kind of go a little bit black around the edges. And then we can customize it by going back into the picture effects, back into shadow, scroll down to shadow options. And I'd like to make it a little bit more dramatic. So you can see as I'm clicking on the distance, you'll notice that the shadow is getting a little bit more stark. Okay, so that's good. And now I'm going to add a glow around the pieces so that when I drag them onto the game board, there's a little bit of contrast between the background and the game board. So I'm going to add a glow and I'm going to pick more glow colors and I like to just pick a dark gray or black. So that's what it looks like when we drag it onto the game board. Now I'm going to arrange the game pieces in little piles like this just so that it's not visually as cluttered when we're playing the game together. So I'm all done. The game is ready to play. I will be playing it using the add-in from Lesson Picks, which is a subscription that you can pay for for $36 a year. I'm not going to go into details about how that works because there are plenty of videos available where you can learn how to use the different features of Lesson Picks. One of the fabulous features of Lesson Picks is that you can create custom spinners and dice. So this is how I would create my spinner. I need to make it a little bit bigger and we make the game board a little bit smaller and now we can spin. So person number one gets a four and put it in place. Person number two. Oh, lose a turn. Okay, person number one. Gets a two. And so on and so forth. I hope you found that useful to get started making your own games for teletherapy. Until next time, see you soon.